Now moving uh, a little further westward into India, uh, where Buddhism started and Buddhist art started, and then it spread uh, to China and Japan. But the Buddhists, uh, in their art, uh, as did the Hindus, had a, a hierarchy of art. And the more kind of s symbolic, abstract an image was, the better it was. And the more kind of realistic or sensory or connected with sensory appearance it was, the lower or lesser it was. And in the sense of this hierarchy, in the sense of its relation to the purpose of human life. So for them, the purpose of art is subordinate to the purpose of life. And the purpose of life is to contemplate and unite with a reality that is beyond all forms and appearances, uh, while being the source of all forms and appearances. So the more, uh, the closer art is to this formlessness, uh, the better it serves the purpose of human life, this contemplative purpose. It's a text from Dietrich Seckel. So he says that uh, for Buddhism, the image's essential purpose is to help the believer overcome all sensory form-bound perception. So the more abstract a visual, visual sign is, the truer and more effective it is. An image fulfills its purpose all the more if it reaches the boundary of all form and allows the step into the realm beyond all form. The image should hint at the basically invisible and ungraspable truth in such a way as to avoid the spiritual impediments of images. The hierarchy of reality is the formless and then the images that are kind of at the edge of form and then the more form-bound sensory images. In the earliest Buddhist art, there were no images of the Buddha. There were just symbols, like footprints or a wheel. And only later did they paint or sculpt figurative images of the Buddha. But about those images, Seiko says, even the Buddha image, which arose later, is only an illusory reflection of true reality. For this lies beyond all human dimensions and categories. Uh, and perspective would be included in those human dimensions and categories. The Buddha image provides a support and aid in meditation upon this reality. And its form must be such that it transcends itself, that it makes the beholder forsake all notions limited by samsara and leads him to that which lies beyond all form. And this principle was also uh, behind the far eastern landscape painting of the Chinese and Japanese, the principle that the most real is beyond form. Sometimes uh, described with only negative terms like void and empty uh, relative to form, though full of power and luminosity to manifest all form. So Titus Burkhart um, has, says this about the Far Eastern landscape painting. A Far Eastern painter is a contemplative, and for him the world is as if it were made of snowflakes, quickly crystallized and soon dissolved. 
He is always conscious of the non-manifested reality underlying all phenomena. The less solid the physical conditions are, the nearer they are to this underlying reality. Hence the subtle observation of atmosphere that we admire in Chinese paintings in ink and wash. <laughs> 